Okay, so as this is one a uh, kind of a different video, it's about um Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick, who is considered by most to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest filmmaker of all time. And he really is it really is good. I will say that. Now, when I decided to do this, my goal was to answer the question whether or not really does he deserve that title. And even though I do not like a lot of his movies that people would consider masterpieces, I do say that even though he's not the most amazing writer of all time, I'd say he's he's an, a great director and he definitely deserves the spot as one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, definitely. So, Stanley Kubrick, who originally was a photographer, decided to go on to film with Flying Padres, first for short film. He went on to do other movies and revolutionized almost every genre possible. He's like the Beatles. He was able to take on seemingly any genre and set a bar while he was doing it. Like, it's amazing. So, I'm reviewing them in release order, and I will review his short films at the end. Um, but you know, those, I, I will be ranking them too, but I'm not, I'm not gonna rank his short films, because there are only three of them, so. Let's get started. Okay, so, his first film was Fear and Desire. Now, that is not... It's not good. It's I'll be honest. I mean, it's not surprising. It's not good. I mean, it was his first movie. But it is pretty bad. And it is kind of disappointing, because Flying Padre and Day of the Fight were pretty, pretty okay. So, but... He really was trying to make a war film, which he did a lot better um, a couple decades later with Full Metal Jacket. But it didn't really seem to work out. The acting is terrible, which is understandable because it was essentially just Stanley Kubrick's friends. The production design was also terrible, which is not understandable because it had a $52,000 budget, which, you know... You know, it, it, considering this isn't, like, supposed to be an action movie, it's set in the jungle, and there's a raft. Like, they, do they, what were they doing with all that money? I'm just saying. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too critical. Uh, you do really see a lot of the blueprint for Stanley Kubrick's newer films, but I don't decide, I don't say that, Kubrick is, like, this is another masterpiece just because he, like, you know, they had the the blueprint of what a masterpiece could have been. It wasn't, it wasn't very good. It wasn't, wasn't good. I understand why it wasn't good. It was, you know, his first film, but he really, it's kind, it's really disappointing to see this as his first and worst film, definitely. Um, everyone agrees on that. So, I'll say this is, that, there's really no, nothing to talk about. I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of interesting that Stanley Kubrick tried to destroy every copy of it, uh, and tried to never let anyone see it. It's also kind of interesting that it's in the public domain, so you can watch it for free online, so I would really recommend it if you're a Kubrick fan, because it does show a lot of his creativity, but it does seem to show the more ideas than actual good execution. The film, the like filmography is pretty good, which you should always expect from Kubrick. But honestly, this is just a below average student film. Um, I give it a two out of 10. Okay. Now this is Killer's Kiss. It's a movie about um, a killer. I'll be honest, I don't really remember this one. It's 
not that good compared to his newer films. It's better than some of his newer films because I there are a lot of Stanley Kubrick films I don't like, but that's besides the point. It's honestly the only reason that this is any there's really nothing noteworthy about this. It just broke even at the box office. It wasn't considered a masterpiece, and it's widely considered to be Stanley Kubrick's second worst film, which makes sense because it's his, you know, second film. And it's not good. It's really not. It, I don't... There's really nothing to write home about, honestly, except for this extremely terrible fight scene at the end of the movie that's in a mannequin shop like it's not it's not good i use this mostly as a baseline for what a competent kubrick film is so if it's worse than this it's bad but if it's better than this it's good now that doesn't mean it's amazing but it's it's, it's essentially the straight middle of the pack it's mediocre you can watch it you'll forget about it there's some interesting stuff the mystery is kind of okay there's some good suspense but it's not very amazing honestly if i had made this as a student film i would have been proud but it's nothing compared to his newer films so i give this one a five out of ten okay so this is what a lot of people consider to be kubrick's first masterpiece now I think the reason that this is good and why Killer's Kiss and Fear and Desire are not as good has something to do with the fact that the killing is based on a book. Uh, I'm, I'm, as, as I am speaking, I am googling what book it is based off of, but I am assuming it is a book called The Killing. A tradition of basing his movies off books continues throughout his entire career. Yes, this is his first book adaptation, and he has continued to do that for the rest of his career. Every single one of his movies is not technically original. Now, that is one thing I say. He's not good at creating ideas. As we've seen with the other two, first two, I am Fear and Desire and... Uh, Killer's Kiss, he's not good at making ideas, but he is good at using them, which is what this film shows. It is great. I recommend it, and I say that this was kind of one of the first, like, really good, like, heist movies. You know, there there were better heist movies. There were good ones before this. This wasn't by any means, a, like, a, a huge deal, like, as a great, like, oh, you know, uh, like, this wasn't, like, a huge deal, like, when it came out, but it, it was good at it, like, it didn't do anything new, but it was good at what it did, it, well, it did do new things, but, like, it was good at what, like, the main premise was good, and it, that, it shows, because it's his second highest rated film on Rotten Tomatoes below only Doctor Strangelove. It's a 98% Doctor Strangelove is also 98%, but it has more reviews, so it's behind. Um, so I say that um, this is... Honestly, though, I think that the, the clown on the poster is kind of misleading because the Clown is really only in it for, like, five seconds, really. I mean, you know, I say that one thing, I wish that there was a movie that was based on, that was, oh my god, I'm really trying to find something, I'm trying to put this in the, Whereas I wish that there was one where the build-up, this is kind of what I was looking for, but the, a movie where 
the heist is built up. We don't know how the heist is going to go down exactly. We know there are, we know the people, we, we know the build up. But then at the end of the movie, the heist goes on without a hitch. And then everyone gets arrested, which is something I wish would happen in a heist movie. And I know it probably has. I just, I don't watch heist movies that much, so I don't know. Um, I first, I thought, why is this called The Killing? There's no killing in it. But at the end, yeah, everyone dies, except for two guys. Well, the main guy in the poster, and then this other, like, guy that was paid to to start a fight at a bar. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's really it. I give it a, a 7 out of 10. Okay, so, even though The Killing was considered Stanley Kubrick's first masterpiece, I think that this is where Stanley Kubrick really started to come into his own, okay? This is great. It is very, very good. I say the most... The the first part where um the movie is like in the actually in the like the war zone there's not you know it's not very interesting I mean it's kind of slow it's pretty good you know not amazing though the really good parts is the trial and the execution the execution absolutely heart wrenching it's amazing. And I have to say that Kirk Douglas does an amazing job. And I definitely understand why um, why people say this is one of his, this is amazing. This is one of his best films. Well, honestly, almost every Stanley Kubrick film could be considered his best. So, you know, it's... Um, an amazing war film. I'm not sure if it's his best war film. We'll see, I guess. But this would be his last war film until a couple, uh, couple years later. Uh, well, a couple decades later. Like, like 20 years later. But, you know, that... That that doesn't matter. This is this is very good. You should watch it. I give it a eight out of ten. Okay, so this is Spartacus. I say I'm not sure if it lives up to the hype. It's good. Don't get me wrong. But and this is a criticism that shares in a lot of movies that good directors directed. It's too long. I know that this is not supposed to be about one event. It's about the entire life of Spartacus. So it kind of needs to be long if they want to show the entire life of Spartacus. But unlike in Barry Lyndon, where that makes sense, because, you know, it's like we're actually really showing like a long span time span like a very long time span but for Spartacus it's just like honestly it's like 5 years i might be wrong but it at least seems like that and there just seems like there's so much filler if they just took that out it would be so much better and i can't be the only person that didn't know that Stanley Kubrick directed this movie honestly i did not know that but, I mean, I mean, he did a good job. This is also his first color film, which I don't know why he decided to not direct another color film until 2001. I don't understand it, but whatever. I mean, I, you know, it's pretty, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um... I say that the real problem is that even though it's based on a book, Spartacus, it's called Spartacus, the book Spartacus is based off of 
the real person Spartacus. The real problem is we don't know much about the real person Spartacus. Not really that much. Well, we know, well, because nobody really took, like, slaves seriously, so no one ever wrote about them until, you know, Spartacus started doing a evolution, revolutions. We didn't really know anything about him. So I don't know if this is a faithful adaptation of what Spartacus was actually like, because I didn't do any research. All I know is that the real biggest problem with this film is its length. It should be shorter. If they shortened it like about an hour, they could, it would have been amazing. It would have been so good. And it would have been great. I do have good things to say about this movie, though. Kirk Douglas, it, great job. Amazing actor. Rest in peace, of course. And... You know, I mean, even besides Kirk Douglas, there are other actors. They did a pretty good job. I don't remember them as well as he he because he's like the best part of the movie, and he's also, you know, the main character. There's a lot of kind of you know corny moments, um, but I'd say that this is a good film overall. I would recommend it. Um, I give Spartacus a 7 out of 10. I will say that Lolita, I don't like it. I don't, I know that everyone says this is great. And I haven't read the book, and I haven't seen the remake, which looks terrible. But honestly... Honestly, it just doesn't look very good to me. It's just not that good, honestly, in my opinion. Like, Kubrick definitely tried his best, um, but w one of the problems is it's like just... It's just about like a... a it's just about like a... a like, like a, they like I read the plot synopsis or uh, on Rotten Tomatoes that said it was about like... About a, a a guy that fell in love with, like, a girl. I thought, oh, this is going to be like American Beauty. But no, it's not. I mean, after the wife dies, which, you know, really happens early, the, they kind of drop the whole in love thing. He just seems like an overbearing parent, honestly. And maybe I hate this movie because I just think Lolita is, like, so far in the wrong. Like... Yeah, the dad guy is definitely a bad guy. Like, he, you know, he was he was a little bit overbearing, but I just feel like like he he was essentially being tortured the entire film. I, I mean, the acting is fine, especially from the guy that is in Doctor Strange Love who's also in this movie. I don't I don't know. This isn't this is this is one where I've been almost consistently either mad or bored throughout the entire film. It's it's not that good. But, you know, it is well shot. Technically, it's pretty good. Like not like, like it's a technically good film. Like the technical aspects are good. I give it a 5 out of 10. Okay, so this is probably going to be one of the most uncontroversial reviews in this entire video cuz Doctor Strange Love is an amazing amazing film. Now, some people think it's original. It's not. It's based on a book called Red Alert, even though it is pretty it it diverts very 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 far from the book. The plot is extremely different, and it's also a comedy. In Red Alert, it's a drama thriller. So, you know, it's different. I gotta say, this is really where the genius of Stanley Kubrick shines through. Even though it's not perfect, it's definitely got problems. It's, honestly, most of them are just nitpicks, but there are enough of them that I can take it down from a 10 out of 10. I wouldn't call it... A masterpiece. Well, I would call it a masterpiece. I wouldn't call it an amazing, amazing film. But it's great. It's amazing. It is amazing. One amazing, not two amazings, okay? 
it's not his best film. It's his second best. Um, I really understand why people like it so much. The guy that plays Dr. Strangelove and the also, like, the th- three characters, he's amazing. He does a really good job. And I see how... What Stanley Kubrick was thinking in this, he decided, well, you know, he was worried back then that he would get blown up, right? Like, everyone was worried, right? It was, like, the height of the Cold War. And he thought, well, instead of making this a serious drama, I think I'm just going to make it as goofy as possible, which he definitely succeeded at doing that. There aren't very many jokes I laughed at, but that might just be because I am not into this kind of comedy. Um... There, but the symbolism and the acting and the the greatness of the 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 way that this is edited it just makes it so good. Script is very well done. I, I applaud Kubrick for this. Um, I say this is probably one of his best films, and I recommend it to everyone. And this is one of the only films that I was not excited for it to end. Um, because, you know, when you're doing a marathon for a video, you're kind of just like, oh my god, just end it already. So I give this one, Dr. Strangelove, a 9 out of 10. Okay, so, um, going from my least controversial review to my most controversial review, hopefully, this is... This is one of my least favorite of his movies. I don't like 2001 A Space Odyssey. I thought, you know, something that I don't know if this happens to other people, is when I wor- first watch a film, I depending on how it how I feel about the film, how much I'm looking forward to the film, really depends on how much I look forward to the film. I have a certain opinion of it. But then I watch it again, and I, it usually is goes the opposite. So if I watch a movie that I think is... is terrible the first time I watch it, second time, I think it's amazing, that or at least entertaining, right, and it's something kind of interesting, I don't know if it, if anyone else is like that, so I thought, okay, well, the first time I watched this, it was for my, um, it was for my best films of all time, Christmas, 12 Days of Christmas series, I thought, well, now that I'm gonna watch this again, I'm gonna like it more, and honestly, no, I didn't. I didn't like it more. It it the acting is still I think really bland. I think that the the set design is amazing. The special effects are amazing, but honestly, does it deserve to be one of the best films of all time? No. Um the the acting is bad, bland. The story just doesn't make any sense at all. There's so many out of nowhere sequences. There's lots of the Stanley Kubrick tried to do something super surrealist and honestly, he just kind of failed in my eyes. I think that if you are a fan of Kubrick, you should watch this. You make up your own mind about it. Um people say this is the best sci-fi film of all time. I, you know, completely disagree. It's good if you like extreme surrealistness. I like surrealistness, but only when it's done right. And this guy just seems to shove it in, even when it's not necessary at all. So I give this a 4 out of 10. I know, you know, people rank it higher, but I don't think it's that good. So a 4 out of 10. Okay, so this is my favorite film from any films that he ever made. This is my favorite of them all. The writing is amazing. I give Stanley Kubrick the that he did a great job adapting the source material. The only thing that I find kind of disappointing is that he didn't adapt the final chapter because I would have really liked to see this character redeemed. But, honestly, the only major criticism I have for this film is the fact that... I know this this isn't even a major criticism. It's the fact that the movie's called A Clockwork Orange, and I was expecting there to be more orange in the color palette, 
there wasn't though. Uh, I just wish it was because it would have made it, w- it would have looked cool. Um, but in, the, in my opinion, this is surrealism done correctly, and I think he does a great job in this. There's a lot of futuristic things that I think are great. It feels kind of like a punk future based on kids from like the the sixties kind of merges with the future like the future seventies sixties seventies things from the past that make a new future that kind of it looks really artsy you know and you can get away with anything uh which is not true but whatever it's an interesting version of the future and i say that kubrick does an amazing job at adapting it and i say that the the whole dilemma of whether or not we should make people good through a kind of like uh, a kind of means is is very very interesting and i think malcolm mcdowell does a great job amazing acting job in this i really 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 like this film and i would recommend it to anyone um, it's a bit inappropriate, but if you like good movies, you should watch this. This is Stanley Kubrick's best film, in my opinion. I give it a 10 out of 10, which is an honor I do not give to many people. So this is this is pretty this is pretty big for him. I mean, it's not like he cares. He's dead. He died before I was born, but it's still pretty impressive, you know. So. Here we are, Barry Lyndon. I did not know what I was expecting when I watched this film. I don't know what I should have expected. Um, it's good, but not great. I would say that. I talked about it during the Spartacus review, and do I do understand that the film does kind of... Kind of... Uh, it does make sense why its runtime is so long, but honestly, the story's just not that good in my opinion. I think that it's not, it's, it's it's good, but it's not like that good, honestly. And I feel like it's more like just Barry Lyndon being like, it's just like, Towards the beginning, it's like about how, oh, Barry Lyndon's going to become greatness. And then then at the end, it's just like, oh, everyone hates him. And it's like, you know, I feel like I've seen this story done better. I am kind of interested that they talk about a fictional character, Barry Lyndon. He's loosely based off of a real person. I don't remember his name, but you can look it up. Because Barry, Barry Lyndon's based off a book called The Luck of Barry Lyndon, which is loosely based off of the person that I don't remember his name. There's some parts of the film that are kind of accurate to what happened, but honestly, not really, because this seems to have been just lost in adaptation. Most of the truths are just not not even there. Um, honestly, I probably would have liked this movie more if it was actually based on a real story, but... Um, you know, it's just not that good in my opinion. Uh, this is one of one of the uh, films I just don't really recommend because I can't. I just can't justify the long runtime in my my book. I I did say that it makes sense why it's so long because the character is like it. It's it's about this Barry Lyndon's entire life which you need to, like, you need to talk about for a long time. But I just feel like there have been life stories that have been done better. It doesn't need to be so long. It's, it's fine. I give it a 6 out of 10. Okay, so this is The Shining. This is considered one of Stanley Kubrick's, if not his best film. This might be the only film that Stanley Kubrick has ever directed where the book is still more popular than the movie. Even though the movie does come very close. This is a Stephen King movie, although. I bet Stephen King was like, oh, Kubrick's 
directing one of my movies. I didn't expect that. Is directing a movie about my book. That's probably what he was. He was like, oh my god, I didn't expect he would do that. You know, because he's Kubrick's a master adaptation. Or then he watched it and he was like, ah, I don't like it, which you know makes sense. I mean, he has a lot to work on. It doesn't. Uh, it does. It does veer away pretty far from the the book at some points. There are good bits, there are bad bits. The first time I watched this, I thought, eh, it's really boring. I watch it again, and I actually changed the rating, because it's pretty good. It's not scary at all. I don't know why people say it's scary. It's just not. I was only scared one time, and it was from the jump scare, where they they zoom in really close. They pull up the music where it's like, oh, red rum backwards spells murder. I mean, I already knew that, but the way that they filmed it was like a jump scare. They filmed it like it was a jump scare, so it was just a cheap scare. Didn't stay with me at all. I do not find this movie scary at all. I find this like I am the most easily scared person ever, and this is just not a scary movie to me at all. At all. I say that Jack Nicholson and uh, Shelley Duvall, I think, was the person that played the, I might be wrong about that, okay, that played the wife, um, Jack Nicholson especially turned in a amazing performance here, probably his best, I haven't seen very many of his movies though, so, take that with a grain of salt, right, so, I say The Shining is great, it was one of the two movies I saw beforehand. Um, the other one was 2001 Space Odyssey. It's, I still say, though, that the acting from the kid is terrible, which makes sense because he's a kid. There's some kind of embarrassingly badly acted scenes from him. But I do say that this is great. Um... So I recommend it to anyone that's a fan of Kubrick, fan of horror, fan of Nicholson, anyone who's just a fan of film, honestly. Even though I don't think it's like his best film, I mean, it's still good. It's still good. So I give it, I give it a 7 out of 10. Okay, so we're on to Full Metal Jacket, which some people say is his best. Some people say it's his worst. I fall in the middle. I think that this is a good movie for sure. If you say, if you just take the beginning part of it. This is very highly ranked because the beginning is the, the beginning recruit, like the, the, the stuff about him learning to fight is one of, is the best, is in my opinion, the best thing that Stanley Kubrick ever put on film. It's amazing. It's so good but then then there's the vietnam portion which is long and boring and terrible in my opinion absolutely horrible horrible so i say that it's not like horrible you know i say horrible just because i compared it it's okay which is why it's not lower on the list it's okay it's not very good it does not live up to his standards and i say that full metal jacket the beginning part you should just watch it. If you're going to watch Full Metal Jacket, unless you're a Kubrick fan, what you should do is you should just watch the beginning part as a short film and just that. That's it. Because there's... Really, it, it ties up all the loose ends. Uh, it didn't need to continue. I wish that they had just made the... They had just made more of that. Because I think that would have been interesting. or It would have been more interesting. So... Yeah, I give that. So, because of the, its beginning section, which is so good, I give it an 8 out of 10. But because of its end section, which is just fine, it's not a 10 out of 10. So, I give it an 8 out of 10. But the beginning section is a 10 out of 10. It's very, very good. So, this is the last film. The last one. Are you excited, guys? Are you great grateful? Because I definitely was when this film ended. Because this is not good at all. This is one of my least favorite from him. 
The only reason it's not his worst movie is because Fear and Desire is worse. This is... I don't... I, honestly, though, I don't really blame this on Kubrick because what happened was that he kind of made the film and then he sent it over to... Um, sent it over to Warner Brothers and they were like, eh, you know... Well, but then he died six days later after that happened, so he was kind of like, well, we don't want to mess with Stanley Kubrick's vision, right? I mean, even though he had more vision to change in this film, like, he had stuff to change that could have been changed that would have made it better, which is what he did with other films, they were kind of like, well, if we mess with this, it's going to be absolutely terrible, so we just leave it as it is, essentially. So that's kind of what they did, and... I don't blame them. I would have done the same thing, and I guess it worked out for them because this movie is considered a classic. Um, and it, I'll say that it is one of my least favorites at all. Of all, it's I, I would not recommend it. There isn't much to say, honestly. It's just bad, in my opinion. Like acting's okay. It's not amazing, but Tom Cruise is pretty good. But the, all of the 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 the, like, plot is just kind of cringy, which is, I thought that it would be, like, you know, when I first heard about it, I didn't know it was directed by Kubrick, right? So I was like, oh, you know, well, why not? I don't know, let me read, watch it. You know, it's fine, fine. I thought, well, you know, I, I was cautiously optimistic because I was thinking, oh, I mean, Kubrick's done better with worse material, but then it's just, like, it wasn't even good at all. It was just terrible. It was just terrible, honestly. So I give this film, which I don't recommend, a 3 out of 10. So uh, here's a ranking if you want to pause it and read it um, as your chance. So go ahead. Now, because these are... Short films, I will not be reviewing them in much, much detail. I will just be giving a brief overview of what I think, and I will also not be ranking them, because there are only three of them, so there's not much to rank. So, let's say, first um, on the list is Flying Padre, which is a nine-minute short film about a priest who owns a, or a pastor, who owns a plane, and who gets calls for him to take people to the doctor in less than an hour, apparently. So this guy, he flies planes. There's not much to talk about here. It's fine. It's not amazing. I give it a 5 out of 10. Okay, so Day of the Fight is about, uh, mostly build-up for the fight, um, they even acknowledge this in the short film itself. It's not very interesting. If you're a big fan of Stanley Kubrick, I recommend it. It's an okay boxing kind of docu documentary, maybe, biopic a little bit. Um, I give it a 5 out of 10. It's a lot like Flying Padre. It's not amazing. It's not terrible, okay? Okay, so this is a half-hour documentary about seafarers. It's a propaganda piece about... Um, that was commissioned by the, um, the, the, o, the IOU, I think, but, or the OUI, or, it's a seafarers workers union, I don't, I don't know exactly what it's called, it, it's, it's not very good, it's kind of interesting, and I think that nobody could have done a better job than Kubrick, but there's really not much to talk about here, uh, I recommend it if you want to learn more about seafarers, it's kind of interesting, um, I wouldn't put much store in what they talk about because, you know, it's a propaganda piece, so it's not meant to be, you know, it's not meant to cast them in the real most realistic light. So I say I give this a 6 out of 10. It's pretty good, not terrible, and I say it's better than the other ones. Um, Stanley Kubrick only did this because he needed the money, so it's 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 fine. So, this is the end. The end of... End of this. This is the end. End of my... Uh, whole... 
marathon, the Stanley Kubrick marathon, I spent two days, two or three days, just watching Kubrick movies. I know you think, oh, you didn't just watch Kubrick. Yes, I only watched Kubrick movies those entire days. I slept and I watched Kubrick movies. That's all I did. And I'm being serious here. No exaggeration. I went downstairs, get some food, I bring up so I could watch Kubrick movies. I think the only time I stopped was to... I don't know. I th- Oh, I stopped because I had to do something for school. But this is great. I say that Kubrick is one of the best living filmmakers. If you have any interest in Kubrick, I would recommend doing this yourself. Except maybe you should span it over the cr- the length of a fortnight, maybe. Um, but it's it's good. It's it's really good. It's really good. So I say, uh, while Kubrick has had his bad times, he's had his good times, and he's one of the best directors of all time. I definitely agree with that. So I say that that th- it's kind of amazing to see this come to an end because I feel like I've been watching my spending my entire life just watching Kubrick movies. It's it's, it's amazing. I'm not sure how to end this though, so uh, I'll just say, um, goodbye, and, uh, don't do this, you, it's, it's torture, it's, it's torture.